Hello everyone, I hope you're well, staying out of harm's way, and I wanted to go into the uh, 5.3 Roman numeral 1. Uh, the last exercise we went over Venn diagrams as a means to the end of proving arguments valid or invalid. Today we're going to use rules. There are five rules. We're going to see that one through four are really pertinent rules. Five we can toss out. And uh, so we're going to take a mood and a figure, uh, a form of an argument, AA3, that's this number on page 301, um, number one, you'll see as a star next to it. Uh, a, and we're trying to say whether well, it's valid or invalid, and if, we're, if it's invalid, we want to cite a rule to show that it's invalid, okay? So first off, since it's AAA, we know that that's universal affirmative three times, universal sub. A3, so I'd say all S is P. And then we know figure three, uh, the middle term occurs both times in the subject place. So the M term, or middle term, would go there. So then it should be easy to fill in the rest. All uh, M is P. Uh, all M is S, and all S is P. A little check, you should have two M's, two S's, and two P's. A second check, the middle term, or M term, middle term defined as a term that appears in each premise, uh, shouldn't go twice in one premise and no times in the other, let's say. And the predicate should be the, the P term should be the predicate of the conclusion, uh, and should occur in the major first premise, and the S term is the subject, of the conclusion and should be in the uh, minor second premise. Okay, now we want to see whether this uh, violates any of the rules. Um, and you can go back now to check these rules out. These rules begin on 296 and continue on through 299. The first rule says the middle term must be distributed at least once. The second rule over on 297 says if a term is distributed in conclusion, it must be distributed in a premise. The third rule says two negative premises are not allowed. Clearly, we don't have two negative premises here. And a fourth rule, a negative premise requires a negative conclusion. Um, and the fifth rule, if both premises are universal, the conclusion cannot be particular. We're not going to worry about that rule just yet. But we do have to worry about distribution. Something that was explained in the beginning of Chapter 4 when we did categorical propositions, but we weren't concerned about distribution just yet. But we know there are four types of statements. We have A, E, I, and O. Universal affirmative, universal negative, particular affirmative, and particular negative. Um, so, if we have a universal affirmative, which is all S is P, all of something or something else, what gets distributed there? Well, in this case, what gets distributed, I'm going to keep under this heading here, is the S term. Because distribution means you're referring to all members of a class. We're not saying that all P is S. Rather, we're saying all S is P. So S is distributed. If we say all tigers have stripes, we're not distributing st stripes. We're distributing tigers. All tigers have these stripes. So, okay. So E, of course, is universal negative. No S is P. Now, what does that distribute? Well, it distributes the subject place and the predicate place, so the S and the P term. Why? Well, again, some of you may have read on the distribution section at the beginning of chapter 4, but no SSP says all of these S's are not those P's, and all of these P's are not those S's. So the subject term and the predicate term get distributed. Some SSP, um, well, that's an I proposition naturally. Are we referring to all S's or all P's? No, so nothing gets distributed there. The one that's counterintuitive for most people is some S is not P. That's the O proposition. Clearly, we're not distributing the S. We're, not, we're saying some or several or at least one, uh, according to logic, is not a P. But the P's are being distributed. Imagine you were plugging in a sentence, some horses are not thoroughbreds. Uh, we are not saying something about all horses, but we are saying something about all of these thoroughbreds, let's say there are three, are not those horses. So that's counterintuitive, yes, but the P term, the predicate term in an O statement gets distributed. Uh, this has gone over again in the beginning of chapter 4. If you don't fully understand that, just remember then, uh, just for shorthand, that the predicate term of, a, uh, of an O proposition is distributed. So now back to the rules. We can only test the rules 
Uh, the first two rules involve distribution. The middle term must be distributed at least once. Well, in, in premise one, all m is b. Are we distributing m? Yes, we are. Are we distributing m again in a second? So, that checks out for the first rule. The second rule says if a term is distributed in inclusion, it must be distributed in the premise. Well, that's interesting. What gets distributed in the uh, conclusion here? The s. Yes. You're saying all s's are p's, so all tigers have stripes. We're distributing the s term. But now does the s term get distributed in the second premise? No, it does not. If you look at all m is s, that distributes m but not s. So this violates rule two. Rule two is violated. So what can we say about this particular syllogism AA3? Must be invalid. Always will be, because it violates rule two. So the idea behind rules, as opposed to Venn diagrams, uh, somewhat easier, you might think, uh, is that if one of five rules or multiple rules is violated, then you have an invalid argument. If no rule is violated, then you have a valid argument. Rule, rule two is violated, so this is an invalid syllogism. Okay, folks, we're back to 5.3, Roman numeral 1, number 4. You'll notice that number 4 on page 303 has a star next to it. So we're going we're gonna to do those. Uh, the answers are in the back for you, so in case you should lose them, the other ones we'll try at some further point if needed. But again, we're trying to apply, judge whether these are valid or invalid. So this, that's the goal here. Are they valid or invalid? And we're going to try uh, to ascertain whether they're valid or invalid by uh, applying the rules. So, if I have an AAI2, what can I fill that in with? Well, let's take the conclusion first. If we have an I proposition that's universal particular, uh, particular affirmative, sorry, particular affirmative, so we have some S is P. Since this is a figure two, we know that the M term must be flush to the right, so to speak, or both times in the predicate place. So A would be all P is M, and A again would be all S is M. Okay, now, when you, you're not, in previous cases, you might want to go back to the, uh, what we did the last time with Venn diagrams. You might want to practice those here as well. But uh, without using the Venn diagrams right now, we're going to judge whether this is valid or invalid by virtue of one of the five rules. Uh, is it, has it violated some rule? So again, uh, the, the, the first rule here, uh, you'll notice, going back to the beginning of the section uh, 5.1, is uh, the middle term must be distributed at least once. Uh, the middle term is the M term. Uh, it's also the, uh, uh, the uh, in this case, the term that's defined as uh, appearing once in each premise. Uh, well, all P is M does not distribute the middle term, and all S is M does not distribute the middle term. All P is M distributes P, all S is M distributes S, but it does not distribute M. So right away, this violates rule one, so what do we know? If it violates one or more rules, then the argument must be invalid. So then, that form, as Aristotle would put it, AAI figure 2, or that combination of mood and figure, which equals form, is always invalid, AAI figure 2. Let's try another one. Um, and the other one I'd like to do now uh, is the next uh, start example, uh, which is number 7, EAA1. All right, so. So we're looking at number seven, EAA1. And what do we know about EAA? All right, so it's universal negative, universal affirmative, followed by a universal affirmative conclusion. Um, well, this, the way I like to start, the order of operation would be to do the conclusion first. So all S is P is the conclusion in this case. Uh, figure one, uh, you know, if you go back to the figures at the beginning of the chapter, figure one is the M first time in the subject place and the second time in the uh, predicate place. He has some shirt collar method of memorizing this. Um, there's just four figures to remember. I don't think you need the shirt collar method to do it, but that's one way. All right, so E would mean that no M is P. Why P? Because in the major uh, premise, this is the first premise, must have the major term P. Uh, the second is all, which would be all S is M. Uh, so now we have uh, universal affirmative. 
All right. So then we want to see, the goal of this is to decide whether these arguments are valid or invalid. We found the previous one had violated rule one. Um, well, let's see if this is, is violating any particular rule. Uh, well, the first rule says anything in the middle term must be distributed at least once. No MSP distributes the middle term, so we can say rule one, check. Rule two says the, uh, any term distributed in the conclusion must be distributed in a premise. All S is P distributes the S term, all S is M distributes that term again, so it passes the test of rule two. Um, rule three says two negative premises are not allowed. So uh, if you look at that rule, uh, we have a negative premise, universal negative, no M is P, and then we have a affirmative uh, second premise, all S is M. That's one negative, one affirmative, so it pass, passes the test of rule three also. What about rule four, though? Rule four says a negative premise requires a negative conclusion, and vice versa. Negative conclusion requires a negative premise. We have a negative premise here, no M is P. That's clearly a universal negative. Do we have a negative conclusion? No, we do not. We have a universal affirmative conclusion, so rule four is violated then. And since rule four is violated, what do we know? Well, we know then that this argument is invalid. Okay? And so this is going to be uh, more agreeable to many people, uh, the, this method of doing the arguments, uh, because you don't have to do all that drawing with the Venn diagram where more things can go wrong. Uh, here there are just four rules to recall, and uh, you should be able to uh, master these rules in no time. Rule five, uh, I don't regard that as a a valid rule. Two of universal premises cannot be followed by a particular conclusion. All men are mortal, all mortal beings will die, so some, uh, uh, some men will die is, is a valid argument. So I don't see how you can't go from AAI. We're not going to worry about that rule, we'll regard it as bogus. Okay, so that's all for now.